It's an honor and a pleasure to be in this wonderful yeshiva, Nefesh David in Toronto, today. It's a privilege for me to be able to get such chizek from individuals who are spending their day learning Torah, even though they are challenged with their hearing, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing amazing things here. Uh, it's also a privilege, first of all, Kabbalah Dachsanya, Rabbi Kakun, for doing an outstanding job to lead this Mossad. And uh, it was a bonus to see Rabbi Friedman here. And that is because, let me give you a little bit of background. I live in New York, in the holy city of Brooklyn, New York. I grew up with this man's father. We sat on a dais together in 1989 with our Rebbe, Rabbi Vigda Miller. I then had the privilege to study in his father's yeshiva, Rabbi Friedman's yeshiva, for over 10 years. I learned a lot of Gemara there. That is one outstanding Talmud Chacham. And I know the apple does not fall far from the tree. And so you ended up in a wonderful place where you can use the netiyas that Hashem gave you in order to help Kalal Yisrael. So, Baruch Hashem, it's an honor to be here. I'd like to give the boys a little bit of chizuk today. Let me read you a letter written by Mayor Shapiro. You know, this is a very auspicious and important year because we're about to con conclude the Siyam Hashas. And this is the rabbi who invented the Siyam Hashas. Okay, Ramir Shapiro tells a story about his mother. When this has happened when he was seven years old. My she was, she was? He was seven years old. My earliest memories of my mother are from when she used to rock my cradle. He remembers when he was a baby. When my mother did so, she sang a lullaby. I'm sorry again? She sang a song. Learn Torah, my son, for it is the most superior of all possessions in this world. I recall the words that my mother told me when I had my first siyum chumash as a seven-year-old. Learn, my son, learn, and I will merit to hear you deliver your first year when you become a rav. After 16 years, when I was appointed rabbi of the city of Galina, I delivered my first shir as a rav. My mother was there, and she reminded me of the words that she had said. She reminded me of the words that she had said many years ago. She told me, I have no ambition for you, my son, other than to do one thing, which is to study Torah. I remember one day when I was seven years old. It was two days after Pesach. I came home. My mother was sitting crying, deep in thought. She looked so worried. She was mumbling to herself, I, a day that passes without Torah study, will never return. She said to me, Mayor La, who knows what's going to be? Who knows what's going to be? She looked at me with her eyes filled with tears. Mama cried, please tell me what happened. She explained to me that before Pesach, she hired a tutor, a Rav, to study with me. She agreed to pay him a lot of money, 300 rubles, which was a lot of money. This is the year 1896, a long time ago, in addition to his travel expenses. He was a man of Yerushalayim. He was coming from the city of Sakachov, a city of Talmudic Chachamim. But two days have passed and no sign of the rabbi. He didn't come. So my mother says to me, this is Mayor Shapiro, do you know my son, a day that goes by without Torah study is a loss forever. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Her eyes again started crying. And then, the next day, Rav Shalom, my tutor, arrived. He taught me Torah for six consecutive years. My mother's tears didn't go to waste. And my mother's words have remained with me all my life. When I invented the concept of the Daf Yomi, I quoted my mother's words. A day that passes without Torah study will never return. For who knows? Who knows? Boys, you're here. 
You have the most priceless gift you can possibly have, the opportunity to be able to touch this wonderful heritage, which is your possession, the study of Torah. Let me give you another story, which is amazing. I was Zohar to have studied in Yeshiva Chaim Berlin for 14 years. It was started by a tremendous Talmud Chacham, a student from Slobodka, Yevitzak Hutner. In 1963, he was invited to give a speech at the opening of a new high school called Yeshiva High School of Eastern Parkway. And he asks a beautiful question. You know, the first modern yeshiva was Star Rabbi Chaim Volozhin, the prime student, or the first student, of the <coughs> Vilna Gaon. When he established that yeshiva, he changed the word of uh, what they used to call the students. Until that day, if you went to study Torah in yeshiva, yeshiva you were called Talmidei HaYeshiva. Rabbi Chaim came and created a revolution. No longer were you going to be called Tamid Yeshiva. Rabbi Chaim changed it to Bnei HaYeshiva, sons of the Yeshiva. Rabbi Yitzhak asked the question, why did Rabbi Chaim do that? Why did Rabbi Chaim change the name of a person who studies Torah from Tamid Yeshiva to Bnei HaYeshiva? So one day, he got his answer. And he tells the audience, I was walking in my high school in Chaim Berlin. I saw a senior in the high school. I asked him an interesting question. And the question goes like this. Tell me, my dear student, what is the difference in your relationship between your teacher who teaches you math and science and English versus the relationship you have with your Rebbe who teaches you Torah? What's the difference? So I have to read you the answer. The boy was pretty brilliant. He says, my science teacher, my secular studies teacher, it's like getting food from a cook. Here's your food. Eat it. My Rebbe, it's like nursing from a mother. It's the most important ingredient in the world. It's a completely different relationship. Science and math, dry facts. But a Rebbe, that's like a mother. They're with you forever. The relationship is priceless. The nutrition that you get from your mother, like David the Melech, he would say, okay, like I nursed my mother's milk. That's priceless. The Rebbe represents Torah. Torah is the milk that we get from our mother. It's priceless. And the, re and the relationship that we have with our Rebbe is like a person, is like a baby who nurses from the mother. Boys, that's what you have to understand. That when you're learning Torah, it's just not just dry facts. You're imbibing nutrition, spiritual nutrition, which will give you the fuel to succeed in everything in your life. In your personal life, in your marital life. With you, with you, Hashem, you'll all be married one day with your wives and your children. It's a completely different relationship. It's the most vital vitamins and nutrition to give you the ability to go on in life and be matzliach in everything. So that's why Rabbi Chaim Velazhin changed the name of the students from Talmidei HaYeshiva to Bnei HaYeshiva. You're our sons! You belong to us! The Torah is your mother and you're its sons! Can you have a, better, a more better, priceless relationship than that? I want to close with a beautiful story. There was a boy named Jason Kaufman. And he was about to enter high school. He came from a house that was not from at all, not religious. There he was, in the car, going to a high school interview. Where was he going for a high school interview? to the best school in his state. It was an out-of-town, it's a true story, an out-of-town high school. But it wasn't Jewish, and it wasn't public school. Indeed, Jason Kaufman wanted to get into a high school called St. Bartholomew, a Catholic high school. So, they're on the way, his mother is driving, and his mother says, Jason, what if he asks you? And he says, to her, asks me what? What if he asks you if you're Jewish? What if the principal of the school asks you if you're Jewish? What are you going to tell him? I'll figure it out. 
he says. So they drive up to the school, a huge monastery, very scary looking. And they walk in, and there are priests and crosses everywhere. And they ask, where is the principal's office? And they're led to the principal's office on the second floor. They're told to have a seat. And then a secretary comes out and she says, okay, Mr. Kaufman, you can go in now to see Father Kelly. Fine. He walks in, and the principal has his grades in front of him and his records. And he says, Jason Nathan Kaufman, hmm, are you Jewish? First question. So he says, yes. Tell me something. Do you know what the olive base is? This is a Catholic priest asking him this question. Do you know what the olive base is? Jason says, I have no idea. So listen to the offer that Father Kelly makes to him. He says, I see you have great grades, but you don't know what the olive base is? I will accept you into my school on the condition that you will come to my office during lunch break and I will teach you the olive base. They went down to orientation and the Father Kelly addressed the whole school. Jason was there. And Jason, he winks at Jason and says, don't forget tomorrow we have a deal at 1 o'clock. The very next day, school began. Jason came at 1 o'clock. Father Kelly pulls out these huge placard or posters. And he says, this is an olive. Repeat after me, olive. And Jason repeats, olive. And that's all they did that day. And I'll see you tomorrow, Jason. And the very next day, he takes out a, a big placard. He goes, bays, repeat after me, bays. And this goes on for 60 days until Jason learns the whole olive base. And at the end, when he did tzaf or taf, Jason says, it's over now? No, 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 no. Tomorrow begins the real work. Tomorrow we're starting to learn chumash. Okay. Two years, Jason comes at lunch and they're learning chumash with Rashi. After two years, he's in 11th grade now. Jason finishes all chamisha chumash Torah. And he thinks it's over. And he comes the next day and goes, now we start learning Mishnayis. And he starts teaching him Mishnayis. In the middle of the 11th grade, one day, Jason comes for his regular Seder with Father Kelly. And Father Kelly is not there. A few minutes later, he walks in and he says, Jason, I have nothing else to teach you. I taught you everything I know. And now I have to tell you something. Jason, you don't belong here. You really belong in yeshiva, which is a, a school for boys who learn Torah. And I know it's an, a foreign idea to you. So I have taken the trouble of enrolling you in a fantastic yeshiva in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. I will pay all of your expenses and you will go at the end of this year. Fine. Jason now became in love with Torah learning. In the following year, Jason was sent to the yeshiva that Father Kelly enrolled him in Yerushalayim. And Jason thrived over there, successful. He learned Chumash, he learned Mishnah, he learned Gemara. And it was now, at the end of the year, it was Pesach, it was time for Ben Azman vacation. Jason was flying home. Jason got on the plane and flew home. His mother greeted him at the airport. And she said to him, you must be exhausted. Let's go home and take a sleep. Jason says, no, not yet. I want to stop at St. Bartholomew High School. I have to talk to Father Kelly. And so they did. And they went back to his old high school. And he walked in. He has a kippah on now. White shirt, black pants. And he says to Father Kelly's secretary, the principal's secretary, can I see Father Kelly? Yes. And he walks in and they hug each other. And he looks at him with the tzitzis hanging out. He says, should I call you Jason or Yaakov now? Or is it Yosef? It says Yaakov. Jason looks at him and he says, I have one question for you. Why did you do it? Why did you teach me Torah? What's it all about? What's the story? And Father Keller tells him, after I finished high school, a Catholic high school, my dream was to become a priest. They offered us an opportunity to go study abroad for free in the Catholic system. I can choose any place in the world to go study for one year.
I chose to go to Israel, where I was going to enroll in a Catholic seminary. We arrived Friday morning, and we decided I wasn't sleepy. Let me take a walking tour of the city. I decided to go to the old city. It was getting later in the afternoon, and there was a crowd of people going down to the western wall, the Kosel. I got pushed into that crowd, and I'm watching this crowd of people dressed beautifully, getting ready for their Shabbos, their Sabbath, when suddenly someone taps me on the shoulder, and he says, my dear young man, do you have a place to eat tonight? I didn't say anything. I said, no. He said, follow me. And I was taken to this man's house, where I had this fantastic Sabbath meal, a Shabbos Sa'uda, with many other people. After the meal, he looks at me and he says, Have you ever gone to a Torah lecture? I said, No. Well, come with me. We're going to a place called Fire of Torah, Eshda Torah. Meanwhile, I didn't tell anybody that I wasn't Jewish. I went into this building of Eshda Torah and I listened to one of the most greatest shurim I ever heard in my life. I liked it so much that it came back every day. I never bothered to go to the seminary, this Catholic seminary, until it was the end of the year and I learned so much. I was assigned to a Rebbe. And I said to my Rebbe, I gotta go home. And he said to me, what's the problem? Are your parents putting pressure on you to have to leave yeshiva? And he says, no, 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 I can't tell you the reason. Well, he said, I can't let you go unless you get permission from the Rosh Yeshiva of Noah Weinberg. You have to go ask him for permission to leave. Okay. So he knocks on the door of Noah Weinberg. He says, Richard, come on in. We're so proud of you. You've done so well. You've grown. I hear you have to leave. And it's happens sometimes people who come here and their parents put pressure on them to come back. Tell me, what's, the, what's going on? Maybe I, should, I can make a phone call for you. No, you don't understand. I can't explain it to you. Well, Richard, I feel I can't let you go unless you tell me why. Okay, Rebbe, I have to tell you. I don't know if you're going to be happy. I'm not Jewish. Rebbe Noah Weinberg turns white as a ghost. What? We wasted all that time on you? All that resources on you? We could be helping a Jewish child? We, were, we wasted on you? Rebbe Noah Weinberg looks at him and goes, I can never forgive that act. Never can I forgive that act. And Jason, with his guilt, said, Rebbe, there's no way I'm getting on that flight unless you forgive me. There's no way. You have to forgive me. Rabbi Noah Weinberg, being the genius that he was, and he had shikol ruach kodesh, he says to him, Jason, I could see one day you're going to go back and become a principal of a school somewhere in the Catholic system. One day, some ignorant Jewish boy is going to walk through your front door because he doesn't know anything about his heritage as a Jew. And you know how you're going to pay me back? You're going to take all the Torah that we taught you and you're going to transfer it to that boy. And Jason, this is why I taught you everything that I know. I kept my deal with Noah Weinberg. I was waiting for the day, that one day, when Rabbi Noah Weinberg's Nevoah would come true and it came through. The day you came into my school, I said, here it is. Here's my opportunity to pay back. And so I took all the Torah that I, that I learned in Esha Torah and I taught it to you. And then when I ran out, I said it was time to send you to Yeshiva. Baruch Hashem, Jason today sits in Kolel in Yerushalayim with six children. This is the power of Torah, Mother Rabbi Isaac. May I give you a bracha? You should grow in your Torah, be fulfilled by it, be inspired by it. It should change you to become the best B'nai Aliyah. You should always really, truly understand and mimic what it means to be the B'nai HaYeshiva. Thank you for the privilege to be here today, to be able to give you chizak. Have a wonderful day. Uh, uh, oh, sure. Terrific. Sure. Very nice. Pleasure. Thank you.